the honor before us because among us uh, today, we have two national treasures in Indian country that are with us that have joined us for the uh, meal. And we've come to the time to acknowledge them and uh, conduct our Pathfinder Honoring Award Ceremony. And uh, Jim and I are very privileged to, uh, to do this uh, for these two ladies that are here among us. And I'm going to begin by uh, introducing to you uh, my dear friend, uh, Henrietta Mann, one of the recipients. She hails from the proud Cheyenne Nation. She's a nationally known educator. She is a culture bearer. She is a revered elder among our people. And she has had a long, distinguished, and diverse uh, career. And today, uh, she's among us as a role model and inspiration to each and every one of us here. She is one of our country's leading Native American Studies professors. She's taught at uh, Berkeley, at Harvard, University of Montana. She was formerly the uh, founding uh, president of the Cheyenne and Arapaho Tribal College in Oklahoma. I've known her for her political work in the early 1990s, I had a close working relationship with Henry. She was serving as the national coordinator for the Association on American Indian Affairs Religious Freedom Project. This was during a dark time in Native American history in the wake of the Smith decision on peyote, the adverse uh, Ling decision on sacred sites, and we had gathered ourselves for a campaign to get those cases overturned through legislation, and Henry was at the forefront of coordinating that national effort. Her board work is very diverse, She's currently the board chair of the Seventh Generation Fund, one of our nation's leading grassroots activist organizations. She served on the boards for the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C., uh, currently on the American Indian Culture Center in Oklahoma City. Uh, the National Academy uh, of um, Education, and her awards have been many. She's received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Indian Education Association, but above all, Rolling Stone Magazine. <laughs> has named this grand lady one of the leading professors in our United States of America. So I'm very proud to uh, introduce uh, this national treasurer, and uh, I'm sort of substituting for my good friend Rick West, who is also of the same tribe, the proud uh, Cheyenne tribe. And he uh, insisted that I read these remarks that he prepared on this occasion. So I'm going to read and quote from uh, Mr. Uh, Rick West and as follows. I begin with a, an apology to my beloved relation, Henry, for not delivering these words in person at your wonderful and deserved Atom honoring. Perhaps even scarier I have had to ask a Pawnee. 
even though he is my good friend Walter to say laudatory things about a son of Cheyenne. It does really hurt. <laughs> but he has promised uh, um, me that today he will rise to the occasion and give hundreds of year uh, give up hundreds of years of Pawnee history. For me, you have always been what Native peoples have needed. You are a cultural warrior woman. I have watched you for a lifetime as a friend, a fellow tribal citizen, a trustee of the National Museum of the American Indian, a leading Native educator, and a participant in the Sundance Lodge. Your commitment to Native cultural continuance and survivance in the face of great challenges has been without fail intelligent, resourceful, articulate, passionate, and unflinching. Today, as one of your peace chiefs, I honor you with affection and respect for, for being what we call ourselves a human being. And in your case, one of profound and enduring accomplishments and benefit to all who call themselves Native. I know that all who sit in front of you agree with everything I have just said, and that includes me, Henry. So with that, um, uh, Jim is going to present uh, Henry at this time with our coveted Pathfinders Award on behalf of the ATOM organization. same podium with no Nella Duke. <laughs> never done that before. We'll probably never do it again, but thank you, Winona. I am greatly humbled by this honor, especially to follow in the footsteps of some of Turtle Island's intellectual and cultural giants, such as LaDonna Harris, in Scott Mamaday and the late Wilma Mankiller, to name but a few of your pathfinders. And your program reflects that you have been exchanging much information and learning in your time together in this expansive land of enchantment. For three years, some time ago, I too studied in this place and earned a Doctor of Philosophy degree in the university down the road south from here. But today I am a Cheyenne Indian woman, octogenarian, really, and I am essentially a several volume book of speeches, 
class lectures, interviews in some videos, and on a few CDs in our tribe's national archives. However, the majority of my life is still relegated to the world of undocumented oral traditions. And what I have to share with the world is still contained within the interior landscape of my heart and my mind. Like many elders before me, and many who will leave this world after me, we will take much priceless knowledge back to the earth with us. You know, I was born in the Depression days of Oklahoma and enrolled in school when some of my kin's people still lived in box tents in an encampment along the Washita River in western Oklahoma. It was a happy time and we still communicated primarily in our language, maintained our tribal value system and our ways and somehow managed to keep the Western world from making too great an impact upon the Cheyenne world. Our leaders knew, however, that this world was changing, but they held on to the old ways as long as they possibly could. In the meantime, they made sure that I continued to learn our language our values, our ways. And by that time, some of our youth had attended boarding schools, federal boarding schools, both on and off the reservation. And we knew that based upon the prophecies of our great prophet, Sweet Medicine, that that Anglo form of education was going to be a way to strip us of our ways and our languages as a people. That was when I decided that I was going to become a teacher. And I did. And I went on to become a professor. And I retired as a university professor from Montana State University. But in the meantime, Sweet Medicine warned us of the strangers from the East who would take our lands and we would be left with only small remnants of what were once expansive homelands. I have often heard our elders pray that we be left with a small parcel of land from which we could send our prayers out to the four sacred directions of the universe. I still hear that today. Well, as you know, our lands dramatically decreased with one treaty after another, and one piece of legislation after another, especially the Dawes General Allotment Act of 1887. Through that piece of legislation alone, we lost 90 million acres of land. Obviously, the peoples that were here first and those who came later did not and do not today hold the same view of land. If we did, then we would not have the same issue over Indian sacred sites to which Walter referred in terms of our work on Indian sacred sites, on American Indian religious freedom, for us, Noagwas, Bear Butte, is our sacred site as Cheyenne people. It is the spiritual center of our universe as the Chistas people. And it is a female mountain. It is described as having a hollow interior, like a teepee. And it was there that sweet medicine was taught by all of the sacred powers of the world for four years. 
and he codified the ways by which we were to live as a people. He was a very gifted person who could see into tomorrow. And we know that Verbi protects us as a people. That is why we have to save that place. But it was established as a South Dakota State Park in 1961. Today, around it is held the largest motorcycle rally in the world at Sturgis. And there are other sacred sites that are facing desecration and destruction of one type or another. We hear of the San Francisco Peaks. We know about Standing Rock. We know about the pipelines that cross and crisscross our beloved mother, the earth. And we know that we need to protect her. And we know that as this land's first people that we live in a spirit-filled world, which my father taught me, which his grandmother, Hama Ewoista, 